Hey hey everybody, this is Larry, this is me going with Q3 of the Weekly Contest 262, Stock Price Fluctuation. So this is a data structure problem and just thinking about, the way that I would attack these problems is just thinking about, you know, how to optimize for each one of these. Um, and if I can't and I have to make some trade off look at the constraint to see how I can trade off between them. Um, so the one thing I would, note, would say um, after I kind of looked at the problem is that I noticed that you should hit the like button, hit, you should hit the subscribe button, and you should join me on Discord if you want to chat about this or other problems. Um, I would also say that this one was, I thought this one was easier than Q2 for me. So let me know what you think about that. Um, anyway, but the other thing that I actually did notice is that timestamp is 10 to the 9, so you have to do, do you have to be a little bit slicker. You can't just be, um, you know, you can't just have like an array of prices or something like that because 10 to the 9 is really big for timestamp. Um, the other thing is 10 to the 5th core, so you have to basically, each core um, has to be at most log n time or over one time or something like that, because any more than that, it'll be too slow. Um, anyway, so yeah, so I think about these independently, about just, this is what I, lit well, this is what I would call a bookkeeping problem, and a bookkeeping problem is just, Basically, what you're, you're keeping books on, you know, you're keeping track of everything and making sure that everything's in sync. And that's basically what a bookkeeping problem refers to. And this one is just me trying to figure out how to solve each of them independently. Um, so the so I kind of book it down in my head a little bit. Um, let's say I did this in about four minutes. Um, so, so yeah, the current, I knew that that was the easiest one because you just... This is an if statement. You can store it as its own data structure. The min and the max is a little bit tricky because you have to these interact with the update in a more intimate way, so that this cannot be static, right? Like what I mean by static is that if you get a max number, you can't just get a max. But however, as you can see from the example, if you update a previous max, you have to be able to um, go to the uh, Go to the smaller number. So that's basically how, what I mean by this interaction there. Um, and these things can be solved in a number of ways, um, maybe with a heap or a sorted list or something like that. But the way that I did it was with a sorted list. Um, just to and and I think there are different ways of doing this with respect to um because for example, if you're using a set or something like that, like a tree map or something like that in, in another language, um this will also give you min max and update in reasonable amount of time uh, you just have to do the update manually so so yeah so my initial data structure just requires these three things the latest to keep track of the current uh, prices is just literally keep track of all the prices that we get and the sort of list main purpose is to keep track of the min and the max um yeah and yeah so up so now let, let's go over um so the only thing that happens or like the only thing that changes these current max and min is if there's an update, right? So so current we return the what we track in the latest. Um in the maximum we return the max of the sorted list, and the minimum we return the min of the sorted list. So then now we just have to keep track of it. So on update, in the happy path, we just add it to the add the current price to the sorted list, and then we update the dictionary. However, if we have seen this uh, timestamp before, meaning that we, if we already have it in price, then we should remove it from the sorted list while we, ha while we still know what that price is. And of course, um, on an update, we, we just track to see if this is the latest timestamp. If this is the latest timestamp, or if we didn't have one previously, um, then we set it to the latest timestamp. Now that I look at this, I guess I could have changed this to, um, I guess I could have changed this to negative one, so then I could get rid of this. But but that's just like furishes. Uh, it doesn't really change it that much because you have some set to nose or whatever, right? Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, but that's pretty much it. And I I found this way easier than Q two, and you can see from the times. So I don't know what. Complexity there is. Um, of course, this is log n. This is log n. This is O of one, and this is log n because removal and add is all you do, and you just keep track of things in O of one kind of way, other, other than the log n. So yeah, so the the cost of each operation is going to be log n, except for this one, which is O of one, and that's pretty much it. In terms of space, this is going to be linear in both 
you know, in prices and the sorted list. So this is linear space in total and log n per operation, except for current. Um, yeah, that's all I have with this one. The explanation is longer than myself, the video. So yeah, so you could watch me solve it live during the contest. Next. That one, okay. That took really long. <clears throat> You know, a lot of people got even Q3 already, but okay, let's go. <sighs> Slow down. I'm reading too fast and not really f thinking. Slow down, Larry. Okay, so just. Uh... Max price, min price, okay, let's see, what does that mean? Hmm. Yeah, it should be okay. We assume that these are uh, okay. Uh, have people finished this contest yet? One person half, maybe. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problems uh or this problem and we want to talk about it join my discord and we'll hang out and figure it out together anyway i'll see you later bye bye